Look, if what I've said here instigated that, I will fully 100% apologize. But I guarantee you that the internet doesn't need someone like me to be fucking racist. It doesn't need someone like me to be offensive. It, it's pretty much deep-seated at this point. Yeah. yeah. But getting all that unpleasantness out of the way, I do hope this game does well at the very least. Yeah. and welcome to the autumn colors podcast the podcast that has been going on for seven times in a row now and not even once been recommended on youtube i'm your host the one whose videos run longer than the new call of duty story the odd uh, today i'm joined by for right now the axolotl living in the constant state of life and death arashi this is like the seventh time tenth time this has happened i don't know somebody help me <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so today, I think we we planned to do this, like, last week or earlier in the week, but it's just, like, one thing led to another, and I was just, like, beat. Yeah, that was, yeah, that whole thing we won't talk about, but, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, today we're going to talk about the Game Wars 2023. Now, it has been a while since we actually watched it, so, like, and I will admit there were things that, like, I forgot about, but, um, I went, and if you want to, like, take a look while we're watching this, uh, or while we're streaming this, sorry, uh, I went and looked at the, just all the reveals that showed at the Game Awards just to refresh my, rejog my brain in terms of what, uh, we talked about and what looks interesting. So, um, the way this worked last year was... I went down a list of games that either are coming out or that is, or some stuff that has already come out, and more mostly just gonna like talk about it. If there's nothing, if you, if either of us are like, oh, I don't remember what that was or I don't remember what that's like, we'll just skip it. But right. if, if there's something where it's just like, oh yeah, I want to talk about this, perfectly fine. Uh, All right, yeah, that, that sounds fun. Yeah. First things first, though, how you doing? Well, I've been doing good. Just enjoying my day off. Yeah. And I did try uh, rocket racing after uh, about a few days ago. Right. You were right. It was it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it'd be the only time I ever play Fortnite. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, I'll, we'll get to the rocket racing layer, but the one thing I want to say for right now is it's just like I. And, like, Fortnite is, like, either the game... It has always either been, like, the game where it's just, like, either you're a Zoomer or you're someone who streams and just wants to be popular. It's always been that type of game. But Rocket Racing is just, like, it's a new, like, can of worms. It's just, like, I love it. But, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. It's, like, okay. it And we, we found the in-between. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, and, uh, ultimately, for me, uh... I have been going, I don't remember what it was exactly last week, but I have been going back and forth, uh, like, cleaning out the last of my place and everything. The other day, oh my god, the other day, like, fucking, we, okay, so before I left my old home, we had the garage door repaired, because it was like, it was getting on to 20 years old, so it was just like, yeah, it needs new repair. So right. we've had we've had the we've had like the same garage door since we moved in, and it started finally failing. So we call up and we get a new guy, and two times now, especially since we were like trying to sell the house and get the hell out as soon as possible. Earlier this week, the fucking door malfunctions, and it, we're just twirling, me and my dad were just twirling our thumbs trying to make it like work again for the time being so at the very least it like won't fail on us again when we're trying to sell the house and literally today we had to call up someone to fucking repair the door right yeah it's, it's that's no you go ahead i'll, I'll, I'll go it, it's I'm a finished. bitch and a half go ahead <laughs> i i was like but it, that's the problem when it comes to moving <laughs> either something happens or the house doesn't want you to leave yep yep <laughs> uh but yeah, it's just, I, 
the sooner I get past this, the better. So, right. yeah. All right. So, uh, like I mentioned a little uh, earlier, we were going to have two more guests, but they live on the other side of this flat little world that we live in. Yes, I am going to gaslight that fucking theory. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I, it, turns out it's just one, <laughs> turns out it's just one giant civilization map. <laughs> I, I don't really like to get political, and as you can see, I didn't get political because um, I'm not a fucking idiot. Uh, the, uh, now, if only we were the majority. Mm. Anyway, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> speaking of idiots, the game war twenty twenty three. <laughs> Brilliant segue. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so some of these are out of order, but from most of my memory, we'll just go down the list here. First thing we got up is Pony Island Two as one of the reveals. Ooh, okay. I don't know if you were there for the first Pony Island. <laughs> like literally, but... I, I had never heard about Pony Island until when we when it heard it got its sequel so that that's okay, per- all i need okay fair enough then i'll go ahead and put my two cents in i'm excited for this one because okay. for for context pony island was based you know how we have those uh games that like to horror games that like to break the uh fourth wall and all that yeah like your doki doki literature clubs and all that pony island was the game that came before that and it did it. It messed with uh, messed with your head and messed with fourth wall in ways that Doki Doki Literature Club wishes that it could. Like, I know it's like it feels like something was actually in your computer messing with you, like actively going out of your way to uh, mess with uh, system files or either try to uh, play play tricks on your mind and whatnot and it started out as a simple pony jumping fence jumping <laughs> so needless to say i'm excited for it all i can uh, say fact- about it on my end is apparently sung one show is in the game well that just makes it even better now doesn't it yeah so- that is my contribution to that <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, that was me wanting to get my two cents in at least. Yeah, that's that's fine. Um, other than that, there's also uh, this one is new. Uh, Usual June. Oh yeah. This was uh, the uh, it was the action RPG with a black girl. It, yeah, it was. Uh, it had a beat 'em up uh, elements to it. Yeah, it looked interesting. Um, I don't really know what else to say about it. It kind of looked like. I don't know. Um, I guess we're not gonna really talk about it, but um, I guess since uh, like there's nothing else I have for for reference, it looked like a better Life is Strange. I could yeah, I could see it. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe I it's could... the style or the art direction, but just it look it, it's giving me off like it's those sort of vibes. But... It could be that, uh, but we'll see what it what it actually brings to the table when it comes out. Yeah. It might not. Uh, it might not uh, do too much. Uh, unlike what I'm hoping, this will bring in uh, windblown. Let's go. Yeah, we. Oh god, we saw this. It we saw this live, and it was just like this. God, I hope this is a case of like three person or four, three to four people co op of a roguelike because this would be so fucking fun. And given that it's made by the same people that made Dead Cells, yeah, it's 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 gonna be a it's gonna be a blast either way. Yeah. But but yeah, the idea of a possible co-op uh, roguelike it oh if if this goes well, this might open up a whole new world of ideas. Yeah, the only thing I have in terms of comparison is I guess Risk of Rain because I guess it's a roguelike that's co-op. But I've never played it, and yeah, I haven't played it either. Hades Super Giant didn't decide to do co-op for their game, so I'm out of that loop. One day, one day though, one day. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe with Hades too. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Next, 
Next to that is also Harmonium. This is a game where, um, or I don't know if it is a game, because I remember it was like for Netflix, I guess, or Game Pass. I don't remember, but it was I basically think... like, I guess, sort of an Alice in Wonderland-esque with music and deaf, sort of, uh, and sort of deafness. Right. Um, the thing is... I think Netflix is trying to do their own division of games, so it could be a game, or it could be a series, so uh, it's a coin flip. I don't know. I mean, like... like yeah, it's... I, uh, I, I think uh, it's... I don't know. I think out of everything, Netflix is the wrong market for games, because you don't go to Netflix for games. You go to Netflix to get hotboxed, <laughs> and spend your entire time in the, like, stream menu looking for something to watch. <laughs> That's what you use Netflix for. <laughs> and then you find nothing. <laughs> I, 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 I kid. Castlevania is still amazing. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you're seeing where it goes. That's be like, that's going to be my answer to a lot of these. Yeah. <laughs> it looks cute. I can say that much. Uh, what it, doesn't it look, does look cute. On the contrary, what doesn't look cute is Persona 3 Reload. More segues! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, interestingly enough, okay, I don't know if you've actually been, like, looking at the trailers for Persona 3 Reload. I admittedly have not, except until this one. Okay, so yeah, this is, uh, like, okay. So, I mentioned this in the live stream, but there's a bit of a story behind me. Um, I, you know, I like, I like, I'm excited for Persona 3 Reload, obviously, but it's just like, I don't want to like look at the trailers. I, I like to look at that stuff after I usually beat the game or anything. So that way it's just like, I, I don't really want to spoil like what, what's going to be in store for me. Cause, um, if I do actually get it, which, um, considering my situation right now, which I'm not going to get into detail about that, uh, yeah. if I do get a chance to play it, buy it. I want to go into this as blind as possible for what they got in store. Now, that no, said, I... ultimately, when it came to the trailer, just... I have to admit, like, just, I was already impressed of just the detail that they were going with when they first announced it, but just the fact that we're getting new animated 2D cutscenes, and some cutscenes that were initially 2D are now 3D animated, uh, some of the, like... Newer stuff and everything in this trailer is fine, but the story I have in particular is like, I, I, I like back when I was like sort of only knowing little to nothing about the game. Some asshole in a Discord server, like started posting unspoil, uh, like un, like spoil filtered, just pictures of the Persona 3 trailer in terms of what we're going to store. And it's just <laughs> like, I say asshole because literally their reaction is, and I can pull this up too, and. Literally, reaction was like, "Look, I don't know. Like, everyone's gonna be like, just it, everyone's just gonna fucking like be into Persona. I don't understand what's to spoil." But oh uh, god, one of those. Yeah. But the thing is, is like when it came, like okay, so there's a f there's a few things I want to say. It's just like ultimately, when I did notice that in that Discord server, there was someone saying, "Oh man, uh, I wonder if we're gonna. I, I wonder if they're gonna like." It's gonna be like the Phantom Thieves, and they're gonna get new outfits. And it was to like a screenshot, and it, it was in a trailer. The screenshot of them wearing new gear and everything, and I was like, "Oh!" I looked at them like, "You dense motherfucker! You uncultured swine!" But also, <laughs> it's like, it's very obvious. Like, ever since three, they've been doing their own gimmicks. With three, it was guns. With four, it was glasses. With five, it's full of tires. With Three Lear Load, I like to still imagine that more so it's like, what do you give, like, people, normal people who have, like, the, like, fighting power and everything, what do you give them when they're traversing a dangerous dungeon full of monsters and everything? You give him armor, you give him, like, stuff that actually can take a beating. You know, like a logical person. Yeah. Some wood. <laughs> All right. But uh, honestly, if putting in my, give him a bit of an input there, the idea that, uh, hang on, like, and it actually pushed me to 
playing Persona 3. Shocker, I know. I only saw it through YouTube videos. <laughs> it's, but uh, honestly, I, it it it's it definitely piqued my interest enough. Along with uh, Atlas's alt Atlas's new I, new IP. Yeah. Okay. So I found the conversation. Um, right. Like literally, uh, like there was someone that said made me think that if they were remaking P4 one day, the metaverse outfit gonna have a huge glow up in the glasses for sure. Gonna turn everyone cool like the Phantom Thieves now. I responded, yeah, that was only for five. <laughs> like, who wants to tell him? <laughs> Yeah, that was that was only for f that was a uh, shit. <laughs> yeah, that was only for five. This is still their school uniforms refitted for for armor and combat. Like then the someone and mind you, this is a fucking Discord mod, by the way. Someone decided to post, hey, here's what the new like all out attack animation looks like. Here's what the new critical animation looks like. Here's what the menu you right, animation looks like, and I was like. Yeah, it would have been That's nice to hold you. off on the trailers and go into this remake blind and everything, but I suppose that was my first mistake. And their literal response is, I ain't holding nothing, but I will remember spoiler stuff then, I guess. <sighs> it's, God, I, God, I hate okay. people like that. Yeah. Ugh. And that's a fucking Discord mod of all people. Who the heck gave you clearance <laughs> Yeah, it would have been nice uh, to not spoil, be spoiled on that. I would have preferred it, uh, you know, not have been a game I'm looking forward to. Speaking of a game I didn't know I was going to be looking forward to, Metaphor Re Fantasio. Oh, yeah, that. They're uh, Atlas's newest IP that is apparently getting... people from all sorts of different effects. Not to mention... uh. Uh, you, got, you kind of like I, th I think it might have uh, been out there. Might what did you say? Like it was. Yeah, I was from... saying. Yeah, no, no, no. All right. Yeah, I was talking. Yeah, what I was saying was the fact that we're getting folks from uh, from the creators with from uh, Near Auto Automata, Neon Genesis Evangelion, and with animation by You Foldable. Yeah. Honestly, that threw me for a loop more than anything. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like I was, if there was, like personally for me, right. And this is to add to um, the whole thing with Relo, because I think personally for me, this is a big deal. It's not just like, you know, I'm excited for a new IP from Atlas. It's that I'm excited for anything that isn't Persona by Atlas, especially because hey. I've, I've, I think I've said this already, but to those unaware, literally Persona 3 Reload is going to be my make or break game in the next couple of years after 2024 because I am sick and tired of them releasing Persona and then a re-release of the game I just bought like a couple of years after, which is basically just a DLC expansion for launch day price. So, exactly. Yeah, so like literally if it happens with Persona 3 Reload and then they come out with a re-release version with 70 bucks that has the answer in it and everything. I'm like, no, fuck this. I'm out. I'm done supporting Atlas. But if Persona 3 Reload is where it stops and we're just going to get stuff like Metaphor Re Fantasio next, I'm 100% interested in it. But that said, um, I do have a prediction about this, sadly. Go ahead. Considering, considering the history of what atlas's ip releases have been and this is in recent years with shin megami tensei and soul hackers my thought process on re fantasio is this it is going to be a good game now i can't vouch for how good it's going to be but i can imagine it's going to be a good game it's going to have a lot of uh attention and there's going to be a fair deal of like a good uh fan base around it sort of like what happened with Catherine. now that said we are inevitably going to get the motherfuckers that say this is just Shin Megami Tensei or this is just Persona, but just like Mecha or whatever. We're going to get those motherfuckers and they're going to, and then that sentiment is going to keep, keep being parroted down the line in terms of trying to put down Metaphor Re Fantasio. And this game ultimately is going to be sort of just like. It's game going to be like, oh man, like it could have been this, but 
Uh, instead, it's just instead it's just like not living up to what I expected. And ultimately, this game probably considering and the reason why I say this is because it's an action RPG, not a JRPG. The reason why I think this is just because it's just like at the end of the day, it's probably just going to end up becoming that game that's just sort of dropped and forgotten, unfortunately. Now, I could be wrong on that, and I hope I'm wrong on that, because, dear God, if you're bringing in Unlimited Budget Works, the studio behind Demon Slayer, the many Fate Stay Night <laughs> uh, adaptations, fucking... Uh, oh, there's one with, uh, like, uh, gay, sexy samurai, and not Demon Slayer. But if, <laughs> if, if you're bringing in the... If you're bringing in, like, this CGI, like... Uh, studio that knows how to blend 3D and 2D animation together and is so well versed in animation. It's just like, if you're bringing in these people and you're going to have this be a flop, you're doing something wrong. Yeah, exactly. So, so I'm, uh, so I know it's going to be an inevitability. We get those, those morons that are just going to, going to be the ones with the megaphones and all that. Yeah. But, I have high hopes for this game. I didn't say I had high expectations. I had high hopes. Okay. <laughs> so, the, if this comes, when this comes out, I'll give it a fair chance. Yeah. Kind of like how I did with Baldur's Gate. So, <laughs> if nothing else, if I probably am not going to have the money for it, but if nothing else, I imagine more so Kagato's probably going to get asked to play this because it's Atlas. Yeah, I'm not as in, in a server anymore, but I imagine the day it got released, there were people storming his server. Like, hey, uh, there's a new IP from Atlas that's coming out. Are you got to play a boss? Surprisingly, they've been quiet about that. Shocking, I know, but really? they've been quiet. Really? <laughs> huh. I I checked the uh, LP thread discussion, and it was like, there has, there was like one, two mentions of it, but... No. Okay, so what that says to me, either one, uh, there really is less attention on this game, and two, or two, uh, I, I doubt it, but they finally figured out how to shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, like I said, there are some good ones in there, but it's, yeah. Yeah, there are some repeat offenders, but it's been mostly quiet. Yeah. I, I don't want to I I'm like I I know I'm dra digging my heels with that uh that server and yeah. everything and I'm and most likely it's been a while since I've been in that server and I'm doing this towards people that have that don't know anything about the um let's just say the days of Mr. Gaslighter but you know it's just like I look my personal experiences aside ultimately it's just like I imagine that this game probably will find at least some footing somewhere like i mean if a game as fucking cringeworthy as eternites has gotten popularity in the jrpg community i imagine this probably would get some popularity and if it doesn't that'd be a damn travesty <laughs> at the very least uh at worst here's hoping at least get the cult following status yeah i most likely am from this point on going to have to get games on steam because my ps4 is finally starting to get outdated yeah, well, that's why I had to upgrade myself. I don't. I, I. I. I'm not. I'm not keen on giving Sony money at any point until that CEO steps down and they uh, change up their financial practices more with the PS5. Uh, yeah, I get you. Yeah. I get you. But that's why I've been honestly I've been playing my Steam Deck more often than not. Oh. Yeah. It is a shame, though, that, like, with the Steam Deck, it's just, like, because it runs on Linux, and there's just, like, a handful of games, primarily games from China, that I can't play because they just, they don't like Linux, I guess. Speaking of games from China that don't like Linux, Enfield! <laughs> <laughs> it needs to be stopped! That's three in a row! <laughs> okay, so... but for a brief... Go ahead. Yeah, okay, so the only reason I bring this up is because it is, it very looks similar to Kuro Games, the people who did Punisher Grey Raven, Wuthering Raves. It has that same aesthetic of just anime, arena, action RPG, and whatnot. 
Um, I don't know if it's going to be like a full on gotcha game or if this is uh, like a game made by a different company that ultimately is just going to be like it, it's going to take off. I don't know, but it looks interesting. It looks pretty cool. I, I, I am interested to see where where it goes. I am too. Uh, for as for how it looks, it does look amazing. <laughs> a lot more. It, you'd sweat. You, you'd swear you can play it on a on either a tablet or something, and it still runs smoothly. But I'll see where it goes, and who knows? I might end up being a regular. Yeah. Who knows? I don't know. Like, I mean, you can't really do, uh, like, there are other companies that, uh, have, like, I mean, in terms of, like, okay, let's say this is, like, a gacha game. I mean, if it is a gacha game handled by Kuro Games, at the very least, I mean, hey, it's a gacha game handled by Kuro Games. They know what they're fucking doing above some, uh, businesses that I could name. Looking at you, Todd Howard. It doesn't work. It never worked. <laughs> Speaking of uh, shitty business practices, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero. <laughs> <laughs> I have any segues like that, can we too? All right, I will admittedly play Devil's Advocate here, mm -hmm. not for not for Bandai Namco, but for uh, Sparking Zero as it, itself. Mm -hmm. I I am I used to. Uh, it, I know it's targeting nostalgia and all that, but uh, seeing as myself and a lot of others used to play uh, the Budokai Tenkaichi series, I am excited for it. I am excited to get another controller so I can end up breaking it on beam struggles and all that. Because <laughs> <laughs> you know that's what's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. But that just because they got me with the nostalgia does not mean I don't know what they're going to be doing that, that i don't know what they're up to with the uh, dlc wise mm -hmm. i know we're i know we're gonna get the uh 70 plus characters we're gonna get the c the five season passes and i already know that half of those are gonna be a goku yep <laughs> but and, like i won't let the bad outweigh the good and i am super excited for it <laughs> yeah me personally like I know it was a shitty game in comparison to its a third predecessor, but me and my brother used to spend hours playing Budokai Tenkaichi, and we're talking about one here. We're talking about uh, the broken. We're talking about the broken, unbalanced mess of Tenkaichi One, and it was more so. It was like. I remember so much of having like really good nostalgic moments in playing that game and whatnot. Now, in terms of what to expect for this, like, I mean, it's easy to, I mean, it's like, it's like, it, it, it's more so kind of like going like, hey, uh, like I used to like, uh, hey, World of Warcraft is coming out with like, it's x year anniversary like uh and it's it's a brand new game do you want do you want to play it? it's just like oh yeah i remember when world of warcraft was good and then you play it and it's absolutely nothing like the world of warcraft because the company is nothing mm -hmm. like it was when it first like started and everything in the right. grand scheme of things that's kind of how i feel with dragon ball sparking zero bandai namco used to be the shit they absolutely used to be it was like number if there was an anime game it chances are they had their fingerprints on it they had their name right. on it but in years gone by they have gotten pretty greedy with their financial practices pretty greedy with their dlc practices like i'm pretty sure how like fucking i'm pretty sure like how many re-releases of like full editions for that particular time in frame did they release for fighters it's just like fighters they have like full edition gold edition silver edition ultimate edition blah 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 or a chalcum edition <laughs> yeah and it's like it, look i can't act like i'm in no way or we as gamers are in no way part of the problem because we are we absolutely yeah, we are. are like literally it's just like and people want to go with like man if we don't if we want things to change we need to we need to put our money where our mouth is it's like 
Uh, we have been putting our money where our mouth is, and this is where we got it. It got us with microtransactions. It got us with loot boxes. It got us with predatory financial choices. So if I see people saying that Dragon Ball Sparking Zero is a fucking hollow attempt at nostalgia for the sake of just a pit to throw money in, I'll just say is I made a video months and depending on what comes out years before this game came out talking about why i'm skeptical about dragon ball uh, dragon ball budokai 4 budokai Tenkaichi 4 i cannot yeah. say that i didn't call it yeah and you, the second the, the second it does happen you'll just be uh sitting in the on the, on the balcony watching the ensuing fire with a drink <laughs> <laughs> pull up a chair like track out the popcorn <laughs> He's like, well, I warned him. How's that nostalgia doing for you? <laughs> okay, like, I am skeptical, but at the same time, yeah. Speaking of nostalgia, the Sega remasters. <laughs> shots, <laughs> shots, 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 <laughs> How many can we get by the end of the podcast, huh? <laughs> All right. So, uh, um, we got an interesting announcement from Sega with, uh, games such as, I believe, Shinobi, Jet Set Radio, Crazy Taxi, like, all these other games getting remastered, or the very, like, or even remade, and right. from the looks of it, they look fucking great. Oh, they look amazing, especially, uh, especially Shinobi and, uh, Golden Axe on that. I know what I'm telling you. You tell me I can finally play Golden Axe after so long. <laughs> the one thing I am uh, hoping uh, this opens the door for is that we get more of Sega's older IPs remaster. Like, if hell, if Sonic Team finally can get their get the opportunity to work on Sonic Adventure One and Two remastered and do it right, hey, I'm all for that. Right. If we can get like how okay, if, uh, if I'll, I'll I'll let you finish, but I want to say this: if we can get Knights into Dreams remastered, hundred percent on for it. Okay. Oh, that's that's the thing I haven't thought about in a long. That's the thing I haven't thought about in a long time. Sure, you're right. Yeah. We might actually get we might actually get a nice remake if this uh, if this pops off. <laughs> but. Uh, the i the idea that Sega is uh, finally giving older IPs the love they deserve it's it's amazing really and I'm like I'm gonna be shouting this out like in a most sarcastic way but seriously thank the Yakuza series for giving them the, for giving them the money <laughs> <laughs> technically speaking I mean we can thank Yakuza Sonic Frontiers and Persona because Atlas is owned by Sega. <laughs> You're right, but we got those games to thank, and here's and here is hoping that they sell super well. Even if they don't, I'm still grabbing them. Yeah. Uh, all I can really say for now, though, is to be honest, just all we got is like glimpses. All I can say is that they look nice. Oh yeah, yeah. Speaking of stuff that looks nice, Kimberly. <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> so, to those that were not expecting this, um, I didn't expect this at all. Apparently, Ikumi Nakamura opened up an animation studio and is coming out with something called Kimberly. I don't know what it's about. I don't know what to expect, but god damn it, it looks fucking beautiful. Absolutely beautiful, and I know you and Cyan were were going nuts at the idea. Oh yeah, absolutely. So, while I can't give uh, too much, my while I can't give enough on it, I I'll let you I'll let you have the. <laughs> so yeah, like I it. I have look at this point, like if I if there was if I had a dollar. Or if, if I paid, like, fucking animation studios over a dollar for every time I've, uh, time I've praised and 
talked so lovingly about animation. It Animation Studios at this point would be my pimp. I'm just saying that because I fucking love animation and just what they've th thrown up here, what we like they've want us to have in store and everything. And on top of that, led by the meme queen herself, Ikumi Nakamura, like it is just it's just something I was never expecting to see. But in the grand scheme of things, it's like. I'm real glad we got it. We got what we're getting and everything. Like, it is just, it, it's just the, it's just something I wasn't expecting to see by the people that were giving it and everything. Hey, if it, hey, if it's uh, definitely fresh breath of fresh air for most people and for all animators, artists everywhere. I hope it's a treat for you all to enjoy. Yep. Yeah. Here's hoping it can be good. Speaking of hoping it can be good, no rest for the wicked. <laughs> wait, I, wait, I thought money didn't grow on trees. <laughs> I wanted to make that joke during the live stream, but I lost it. <laughs> so, no rest for the wicked. Um, it was It's being developed by Moon Studios, the people behind Ori and the Blind Forest. Um... Mm. I'm not too keen on it. I don't know. Scion was excited for it, so maybe she'll check it out. But it's just like, I don't know. I know, I know, uh, I know Obsidian and I know Chai on the server was uh, looking forward to it, maybe. So, but I, I can't. I'm, I've never heard of it, and I can't really give an opinion. I mean, personally, for me, I, I said this on the stream, but personally, for me, it's just like. It, it's part of those archive of games that looks like other games in its category. It looks like it looks like Middle Earth. It looks like it's trying to be realistic in its own way. It looks it, it looks like sort of like the like the number of games that have taken a page from stuff like Lord of the Rings for their aesthetic. And are rolling with it for X knows how long. Stuff like Dungeons and Dragons and whatnot. It's just like, it's... I get the appeal. I get there's an audience. I get there's always be love for games like these. Personally, for me, though, it's just like... When you ask me, it's like, hey, do you want to play a fantasy game? Or do you want to take interest in something fantasy-like? It's just... I, I think of something was just like the idea of fantasy. The idea of a world unlike no other. The idea of letting like just your imagination roam free just being limited so limited in this little bubble it's just like i hate it so like when you when you like when i see stuff like i mean keeping in the same uh same uh like bubble here when i see stuff like ori in the blind forest to me i love it because it's clearly a fancy world granted there's like so much evergreen around it but that's a part of like why i like it it feels like legitimately this is ori and the blind forest this is ori in the will of the wisps it feels like this is legitimately its own world this is legitimately its own like it's going for its own ideas and everything but it's just i don't know personally for me, maybe i could be wrong on this maybe this is going down a different like direction than i think it's going down but if this is going to be like some uh, a middle earth fighter if this is going to be in its own route like going down like middle earth like knights in shining armor slay the dragon whatnot if it's going down that's route, it's like sure that could be cool but it's just like i i don't know it's just i i i would like to see more when it comes to fantasy i respect the opinion because most people won't wouldn't like the whole realistic setting in a fantasy world when they think fantasy they want to be dazzled by things that you wouldn't either expect or wouldn't or you wouldn't think of in your wildest dreams so i can understand where you're coming from really yeah like in terms of fantasy like i mean you could totally count this borderlands is a fantasy it absolutely is a fantasy and it's one of a kind it goes for it this sort of like post it, it goes for a sort of post-apocalyptic mad mask-esque type atmosphere but it has its own 
like flavor. It has its own themes. It has its own style to it. Right. Right. And uh, I'm actually thinking about it. Now I'm trying to think of another example, but but yeah, that's the fact that I can make it work for two games. I want to say three games, but I try not to think about uh, base game Borderlands Three. <laughs> yeah, I played that this year, and yeah, I uh, I 100% know what you're talking about. It's a but I mean, like, I mean, like, if we're talking about fantasy, I mean, like, Jack and Daxter, Ratchet and Clank, those are two fantasy series that just, like, they have their own distinct visual appeal, they have their own distinct style to them. Like, hell, I mean, like, fucking, I mean, in terms Crash. of, like, older fantasy Crash Bandicoot. Game, Crash Bandicoot. Like, hell, I mean, in the grand scheme of things, if you want to count it, like, I know it's a stretch, but if you want to count it, I mean, like, Sonic the Hedgehog, Mobius, is kind of its own fantasy. Exactly. I don't know why it took me so long to think of that, but yeah. you're right. Maybe, be, maybe it's just because, like, we, like, I mean, Sonic the Hedgehog is popular, but I mean, we associate it so much with Earth just because of, like, Adventure 2 and Sonic X. Right. Yeah. And, uh, but... But yeah, uh, here's hoping the rest for the wicked goes its own route and doesn't turn into another shadow of. <laughs> yeah. Which is saying a lot because I like the shadow of most series. Please yeah. be your own thing. <laughs> Speaking okay. of being your own thing, OD. <laughs> you just have a list, don't you? You're sitting right next to you. <laughs> you, you got off. <laughs> but yeah, Kojima's newest newest project. Working with <laughs> Okay, it doesn't look like it's gonna be VR, but uh, thank God, thank uh, God. But I, uh, I don't know what to expect. It's I'm I don't know. The thing about Kojima and his projects is like, you know, it's like no offense, but I think they're good at getting a lot of attraction, but when it comes to like long staying ability, like. It, it's more so like his games are his games the titles that he's worked on are very much the case of like the hey kind of remember this type deal like i yeah. like I, I know metal gear is a big series popular would not like put it down in any way but uh, let's let's be real it's always that it, it's that game it's metal gear has always been that game that aside from the third or not uh third game Aside from Revengeance, Metal Gear has always been that game where it's just like, hey, this, it's like, the reference game. It's just like one of my Japanese animes, The Interrogation Room. Like, it's it's one of those games where it's like, it's the, the reference game, essentially. And that's not to, right. again, that's not to downplay Metal Gear, it's not to downplay Kojima, but it's just like, I don't know, maybe it's just like the games themselves in the grand scheme of things, but it's just like... I don't know. Maybe maybe it's just like the games are just like they don't really they, they don't really speak the internet language in terms of long seeing ability. They're just kind of doing their own thing and the internet necessarily isn't all too interested in it. You think it, the internet be more interested if it involved the memes. <laughs> yeah, I think that I think that's why Revengeance <laughs> took off so much. It's just because of the accidental <laughs> the, the accidental surprise that that game just the relevancy of the game turned out to be yeah but uh then there's well the less said about Death Stranding the better because that would involve getting political about Konami and but I am curious about the whole by the, that he's working with Jordan Peele yeah like I mean and like, like, I, I, no, you go. Because <laughs> we've seen what he can do when it comes to horror. Because we, I've seen, we've seen us, we've seen Get Out, 
I admittedly haven't seen Nope, but I like what he I like him I like the direction he goes when it comes to horror and it's it, it's enough to not turn me away from OD, but I don't know. I want to I want to see I want to see more before I give a give a final verdict. Yeah, I'm not necessarily sure too sure too much about it, um, because all we got is just the tip the atypical uh, Kojima stamp, which is I don't know what the fuck is going on, but okay. Oh. Is a, uh, I don't I don't know what what the hell am I looking at? <laughs> I like to just believe they just told some people. All right, uh, here's some lines. <laughs> Look at the camera. Good luck. Uh, oh yeah, and like that one lady at the end who was just like she she just looked like she was lost and was like, oh, what what do you want me to do? Are um, you? Um. Are- and all of that was just improvised, where she just screamed. It's like, yeah, sure, I'll work with it. Fair. <laughs> Almost done. Um, are you being held against your will? Dude, blink twice. <laughs> I, you look back at that. You look back at that. She didn't blink once. Well, shit. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know what to expect with this one though. But it seems interesting enough to keep my attention. So I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll look at. Uh, uh that would be mine. <laughs> okay, I'm, gonna voice, I'm just gonna let that go to voicemail. Anyway, uh, yeah, I don't know what to expect with this. Uh, my TV. <laughs> I don't know what to expect with this, but I mean, it seems interesting. I'll keep an eye out on it, and like at the very least, I'll I don't know. Maybe I'll I'll look and see. Uh, I don't know. Maybe I'll I'll I, I guess I'll just say I'll keep an eye out on it. Speaking of keeping yeah, an same. eye out on it, Rise of the Ronin. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's see. I know T- the, it's a a Koei Tecmo game. Team Ninja game. Or Team Ninja, or whichever. It's like, it's, I don't know, it's like, um, I remember, like, you could, like, deflect projectiles and your sword could, like, set on fire and you could attack with that. It looks cool. Well, it does look cool. I I, I don't know. It's, it's part of those games where it's just like, it looks cool, but it's just like, I don't know if I want to spend that much money on it. Uh, eh, eh. The only reason, honestly... I thought it was gonna be. I thought it, it looked like another Ghost of Tsushima game. <laughs> yeah. Like, Yo, sequel? No, no, I don't know. Hey, get out of here. Uh, I can't give my opinion on it, but it does look cool. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, it's just like, like I mean, I don't know, like. I guess it brings up an interesting question. It's just like, I I know it's a big like theme in a lot of video games and everything, but it's just like, I kind of feel like when it comes to like history and everything, when it comes to video game history, like the the period of the the period of like just warring states Japan with the samurai with. Ronin with just like uh like Oda Nobunaga and all that. I just kind of feel like that's the those are the default periods to take from when it comes to like Japanese culture or even like historical culture when it comes to games like this. Yeah, kind of like with the Warriors games and always taking from the Three Kingdoms. Yeah. Yeah. It's like like we get it. We you think we think it you think it's popular and I... but can I, I, we have something else? I say that knowing full well there is a full-on series done by Activision that is the exact same fucking game. Yeah. I had to think about it for a minute. Like, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, on the bright side, uh, from after the Game Awards, that got fucking pissed off, so... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> That's still great. That's still great, though. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to him. Yeah. Uh, 
it uh, looks it looks interesting. It looks cool, and I mean, like at the very least, I'll I'll see what I I I, I guess we'll see how the turnout is for it. Yeah. Speaking of how the turnout's gonna be, Prince of Persia. Now I will be fair to Prince of Persia. I I think it might be good. I think it might be good. Because well, I don't have the biggest connection to Prince of Persia. And I do know enough about this to know it might be in good hands. Maybe. Maybe. I I mean, I, I kind of want to talk about, like, the particular art direction when it comes to, like, the style I see for this particular game, like Prince of Persia. It has the epic games visual. Like, it ha like, it, like, fucking games like Dauntless and Fortnite, like, those, those games have that particular visual, and it's not, it's not that it's bad, it's just, like, it's a style I just can't find myself getting into, and turns off. So it's just, like, I mean, if Prince of Persia is good, I imagine, like, I, I'm really hoping that it's good so that it can, like, actually, I don't know, like, take me out of, like, this stigma I have for this art style, where it just, it, I don't know, it looks, like, I, I look, I know, I, I don't know, it looks, in terms of, like, art direction, it looks cheap. Like, mass-produced? <laughs> kind of mass-produced, but also it's just, like, I don't know. Maybe maybe it's a case of, like, they were worried about how the game worked first before how it looked, which I'm fine with that. But it's just, like, I don't know. It's, like, it, it feels like a gimmicky version of, of like, fiction. It, it feels like, because, like, you know, other games will, like, they'll have, like, good art direction when it comes to, like, their, their fictional worlds and everything. Sure. They, like, they'll take, like, some strides for how it appeals, but it just kind of... I don't know, it kind of looks like, sort of like how people on Twitter bitch about how, like, uh, like, modern day cartoons look, about, like, the whole cow arts type art style, where it's like, it's not that the art style is bad, it's just like, I, I, it's just like, it, it take, it's gonna take something from, it's gonna take some things for me to look at this and go, okay, I actually can get into this art style. Yeah, it's like you just it, you people just haven't found that one thing that'll hook them to this particular style. I um, I can yeah, I get it. So for me, honestly, for me, I think it was like, ironically enough, ironically enough for me, it was high for Pizza Tower hmm. that hooked me on that kind of art style. Okay. So I can see I see where people where you and others are coming from about finding that thing that'll just say okay you know what i can work I, I can i can i can see this i can work with this like i say that but at the same time it's like i think one of the uh i know it's not necessarily like a particular style but i think one of the uh games where it's just like it kind of it, it kind of got me into like a new style of like gaming would be i think you may nikki like it has this very obvious style to it Right. And it doesn't, like, objectively, it doesn't look good, but that's the point of it. Like, that's, that, uh, that all, like, rats around to the point of it. Right. But. To, uh, yeah, I get you. But, uh, and funny enough, that it's like, it, it is meant to be this particular style. And that is, and that didn't help, that in turn helps the game in a way. But I get, yeah, I get it. <laughs> but I do get it. <laughs> It's a, uh, I mean, at the very least, you can't, you can't act like, we can't, I don't think we can deny that. I think Prince of Persia is definitely a passion project for it to be going on for this long, though. Oh, yeah. So, we'll see where it goes, and if they have a, and who knows, maybe this will be it. Speaking of if this will be it, Tales of Kenzera Zao. <laughs> <laughs> I think you might have been reaching for that one, but you still got to it. To be fair, I was going to. Uh, to be fair, like I, I was going to say, like uh, speaking of passion projects. Okay, that's that's fair. <laughs> that's fair. That one might have been better. 
yeah. <laughs> so this one is very much like, okay, I don't want to be one of those guys and like absolutely say the like, oh, this is the uh, like, this, this is obviously this going for this particular style. It's like, I think it's a very like African culture centered game. Like, cause very much like I, I, it was notified in the chat and I noticed a lot of people were talking about it where it's just like, it looks like the Black Panther game. It looks like, like kind of like a Black Panther game, but it's like Black Panther took like notes and inspiration from a lot of, uh, African like culture, culture significance for its film, for its source material. So like I, when I look at this, I'm like, this is something where it's like this is this is actually something where it's just like people behind it wanted to make a game focused around their heritage and honestly in the grand scheme of things it looks interesting it it does look interesting from what we saw and honestly the i the idea of making a game based around one's heritage in a in a world where it is considered there you would be hang where you would be crucified on the spot for even daring to show individuality. I wanna say good for them and don't let uh, then don't let others try to push you down for that. Especially mm -hmm. on Twitter. Yeah. Oh man. This game I mean when this game comes out, I'm just gonna have to I like I don't know I'm just gonna have to ignore the internet on it because it's just like it's do you heard, yeah. have you heard of the whole clock striker situation I have not okay so to those who haven't um so for a long while in the art community there has been this question of like hey like when it comes to black edits of paler characters why do you guys have to just edit black characters why can't you just make your own black characters and there were people that went out of their way to make one and they made a whole manga around and they advertised it as such as the first black shonen protagonist first black female shonen protagonist and that got under everyone's skin because like it, it because they just want some reasons to bitch about it but it's just like literally there were people that went out of the way to make their own black characters and all of a sudden people now are getting mad it's you just say, but this is what y'all wanted right yeah <laughs> isn't this what y'all wanted <laughs> <laughs> fucking just like uh, the one thing i fucking hate and it's just like, I don't want to say anything, but it's just like, I 100% imagine if there are going to be mods for this game, there are going to be some ones that, like, absolutely um, send the African American community ablaze. I absolutely believe that, and I'm not going to say what that is, it should be fucking obvious, but if... Look, if what I've said here instigated that, I will fully 100% apologize but i guarantee you that the internet doesn't need someone like me to be fucking racist doesn't need someone like me to be offensive it, it's pretty much deep-seated at this point yeah. yeah but getting all that unpleasantness out of the way i do hope this game does well at the very least yeah speaking of hope it does well suicide squad <laughs> okay that okay. one was good yeah <laughs> yeah good. yeah <laughs> like in real realist is like it seems like an interesting idea like i will say that it seems like an it seems like an interesting idea suicide squad killed the justice league and on top of that that fucking trailer with the gorilla song like it is oh. it, it is it, it was pretty good i ain't even gonna lie the thing is just like My... i haven't really pinned down on what specifically uh suicide squad killed the justice league is going to be like i don't know if it's going to be like a beat em up or like a multiplayer sort of like multiplayer deathmatch type deal or if it's going to be a moba mm. i want to the thing i want when you when you brought up a multiplayer type thing i was thinking along the same lines as uh gotham knights because it was kind of the same thing 
Yeah. But like, I uh, like I, I I'm like I have my tablet up here and I'm looking up some of these games and it's just like there's literally nothing of note really about it other than the fact that it's going to be out in about a month or so, out in about a couple months or so, and yeah. No, yeah. Uh, the I. The idea behind it show is pretty good. I know people are sick to death of the whole evil Superman thing, but I don't know. I wanna... Like I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but it's like I have seen like more people bitching about like who could beat when to fight Goku or Superman, as opposed to being sick and tired of Superman being evil. Uh, that is that is that is fair. That is fair. Honestly, uh, <laughs> it's like, uh, but I know there have also been gripes about it being live service, supposedly. But it still hasn't come out yet, so we'll wait and see. Yeah. Oh man. Speaking of hasn't come out yet, yeah, Visions of Mana. <laughs> Hey. To be fair, that uh, is a segue I could put in a number of things here. It's a, the, the fact that it took you this long to, want to <laughs> hold on to it for this long, I I applaud your willpower. <laughs> so. I think, but uh, Visions of Mana, I don't know it. It looks nice, but it's just like from what I hear, it's most likely you're just going to be controlling multiple characters at once instead of being co-op. I don't know. It looks like just. It, it looks like just an anime-esque Legend of Zelda without any of the Genshin shit. And that is fair. Uh, and I'm hearing this from... Okay, the way I'm hearing this, you've never heard of the Mana series until now? I have... It's in one ear out the other. I know about the Mana series, but it's just okay, like I... never been interested. Okay, that's that's fair. I can see where that uh, that opinion would uh would uh, ring true. And the reason why I say <laughs> Legend of Zelda is because it it's got very much the same Unity visual appeal of Genshin Impact, which they they've stolen their assets for Genshin from uh, Legend of Zelda: Breath of the Wild. So there you go. There's your there reasoning. You there you go. But uh, but yeah, I can I can a bunch of. Uh, Legends of Mana fans just crawling out of the woodwork when they see that and just go <laughs> rising from the dead. <laughs> All right, Bubble Fox, it's time to move. I will. All right, let's go. Yeah. For those that for Mana fans had been wait that have been waiting for God knows how long, you have your you have your new game. You have your potential sequel. Relations. <laughs> I don't know. If I get paid, to, if I get paid to play it, I'll try it out. I'll say that much. Speaking of getting paid to play it, Jurassic Park Survival. <laughs> you couldn't pay me enough to play. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, okay. I'm I'm gonna be real. I don't care for Jurassic Park. Like I watched the first film, I liked it, and then I didn't care about the rest of like going forward. When it comes we were only we were there for the T-Rex, that was it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just I don't know. I Jurassic World Survival is just like I, I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's there'll like, be some eh. funny mods. I don't know. Eh, maybe. Maybe. That mod where you play as the dinosaurs, alright. <laughs> Cause it, the way it said survival, it feels like it's gonna be like a dead by daylight type thing. That, and oh god that i don't know how that would go <laughs> <laughs> i maybe it might be a friday the 13th type thing where it's just like everyone chooses the t-rex and they're just all fucking broken oh so it's like uh, it's like that game evolve where everybody votes to pick the t-rex and everybody else and one person is stuck with the trapper <laughs> But yeah. <laughs> well, I'm not. Well, I don't really have any particular inclination to play it. I know other people are excited for it. Yeah. So good for them. 
Yeah. I don't know. It, <sighs> it, I mean, it looks nice. Okay, it looks fine. Uh, I'm probably, I imagine more so, I'm not going to hear too much about it in the grand scheme of things. It doesn't really seem like the type of game that's just ultimately going to be the next Lethal Company right now. It doesn't, yeah, I, I, I could not. be wrong on that. I could be wrong on that. I could, hell, if I had known about Lethal Company in, like, at the Game Wars 2023, I might have said the same thing back then. And then I would have had to, like, eat my own words because Lethal Company has taken off as one of the biggest multiplayer horror games out there. Would you like some seasoning for those words, good sir? <laughs> but, uh, honestly. Uh, so yeah. As much as I want to get on that subject of Lethal Company and its skinwalker line, <laughs> we got who the hell came up with that? I hate y'all. It stalls right away. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I, it, I'll look towards other games, but I, I don't know. It's It doesn't really have my attention. It's like, it could be fun, but meh, it's not worth it not on my this it's not worth looking at at the moment yeah but you don't know what is worth looking at that new war <laughs> expansion but you know what is worth <laughs> looking at black myth wukong <laughs> uh, that too but yes <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we 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 finally got that release date after trailers and trailers and trailers of nothing of no of no uh of no confirmation it, yeah it's no secret to me i don't pay attention to game news or what's like popular unless it's something where it's just like oh this seems interesting or oh i know oh i'm, I'm interested in this i want to see how it goes i don't pay attention to this because i don't literally have the money to pay attention to it yeah that's I, I don't so this is the first time i'm actually hearing about uh, Black Myth Wukong, and honestly, it looks nice. I am interested to see, and from what you've been saying, I mean, it looks, it sounds like it's been a game that's been in the works for so long, so I imagine more so that, um, a lot of what's been put into it, hopefully, maybe it'll be, uh, like, it'll show that it's been time well spent. Oh, yeah. It, yeah, that's what we're all hoping to. And... Given how yeah, it was, given how it's made by a studio in China, aside from the trailers, they have been. We haven't heard anything more about it until this game awards. So, you definitely know it's going to be time and money well spent. All the more. But yeah. but yet yeah, now I can actually look forward to August of next year. <laughs> yeah. It look it's it seems to be it, I don't know it, it'll, it'll be an interesting game. I'll have to keep an eye on it. Speaking of oh, keeping yeah. an eye on it, Blade. <laughs> Not too this okay, one, okay. Now. This this one, I'm actually am serious. I want to keep an eye on this one because we've like ever since the days of like Wesley Snipes as Blade, we we haven't really had this. Uh, we haven't really had this character be focused on too much. So. Having a game where not only it like from the looks of the time they put into that trailer, but from the sounds of the people who are working on it, like it's sounding like it's gonna be somewhat of a interesting game to look forward to. Oh yeah, and yeah, honestly, what was you're right? Not since Wesley Snipes, but heck, even when was the last time Play was ever mentioned? Ever? Oh God. Oh, really yeah. has been a long time, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that one. But the the uh, the blade announcement came so far out of left field yeah. that I I admittedly near out nearly fell out of my chair at work. Thankfully, I had to push the talk on so y'all didn't hear it. I think like it's I, I I don't know maybe it's the Marvel tradition because I remember last year I think they announced uh like a teaser for Wolverine. Yeah, I think that was about all we saw at Wolverine. Yeah, so I think it's like maybe it's just that maybe it's just like Marvel's tradition now in gaming where it's just like I don't know, maybe for the Gaming Wars 20 uh 24 we should look out or yeah, 2024 we should look out for a reveal trailer for another uh Marvel game. 
<laughs> this one's gonna <laughs> this one's gonna be Hulk. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Either me, that me, or like honestly spawn. Ooh, yes, yeah, spawn. If like I I don't really want to uh, like say I, I don't really want to inst- like inside anything or anything, but hey, if we can get Keith David as spawn, if he's still gonna be working and everything, Keith David as spawn twenty twenty four? Absolutely. Make it happen, people. <laughs> yeah. uh, speaking of, speaking of, I know this isn't on the list, and obviously because it didn't show up at all at the Game Awards, but I played like uh, a bit of Hellboy, that Hellboy game that came out uh, that was announced last year, and was... it was rough. Oh. Yeah, it's not to say that it was bad, but it was just like it the controls felt rigidy, it was the art direction really wasn't all that impressive. It felt like if I had more than enough money and I had some time to kill and I got nothing better to do, I'll play that Hellboy game. But if it's like if there's other options available, I'll pass. That's what it felt right. like to me. It ah, so it was a fuck it on board type game. Yeah. Oh, those that's, those are the worst type of games because they can either be really they can either be hey I'm bored let's look at this game that oh hey this is actually pretty good or on the other far end of the spectrum yeah I don't know like I, I I don't know I don't really know what to expect with Blade I mean at the very least like what took me by surprise was just the excitement the devs had for it. Like, cause they they seem pretty fucking excited to be working on this and everything. They seem to be passionate. I don't know. Maybe that could just be for the sake of PR. Maybe it could just be to get for other people to get excited for it. But it was entertaining at least. So, oh. I'll, and I'll, hey, if it and if it's genuine, then all the more reason to look forward to it. Yeah, honestly, like, I mean, I would need to. I don't know. I I I, I would just have to see more of it. Right. Speaking of need to see more of it, rocket racing. Oh, you're, oh, you're right. You're stopping playing more rocket racing. Let's go. Yep. <laughs> this is oh god, this is just a surprise. Like last year, I th- I don't know, I don't know. Maybe it's tradition now with just Rocket League, but it's just like last year they had a big event where they were t- collaborating with Kofi Girl, and I got like the skins for the cars, and it was awesome. And now they're t- they've collaborated with Epic Games and Fortnite to get this whole new mode. Which, yeah, like I had played it over the weekend, and it was one of the funnest experiments. It oh, it plays like it 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 was it was a lot of fun to play. Even for like the few minutes I did play it, I did play a few races. I enjoyed myself yeah. throughout all of them. Like, it's gonna make it even. more... I, I like I, I have video footage of this and I showed you. It's just like I I I've like the fact that you can just stick upside down to race tracks. Not only that, drift on those tracks perfectly fine. It's just like like the devs who are making this game took into account what it means to have fun in racing, and that's where I think that because that's that I feel like this game highlighted. Why, particularly, a lot of people think racing games in general are dying is because, generally speaking, they're all kind of the same. Even the ones that were fun are all kind of the same. They're either racing sims or just street racers, kinda. Oh, or your Mario Kart, or your Mario Karts, or your Crash Team Racings. Yeah, but it's like. I mean, in the, in the grand scheme of things, like, we don't really get too many, like, Mario Kart racers. Or, hell, we don't even get, like, many Sega Superstars racers. Like, we, it's it's more so, like, the Forzas. The, the Forzas. The Gran Turismos. Like, we get those games. And, yeah, it's just, like... I mean... When it came to this game, it was just, like... This is something where I was, like, you know what... If we can get other people on board in this in the server and just make a private lobby to play some maps to, this could be prime like prime content. You already know it's gonna be a given. Yeah. 
so uh, oh yeah i'm definitely looking forward to playing more uh more uh rocket racing yeah absolutely it's I, it, like it's i can't believe i'm saying it but it's got me excited for Fortnite. <laughs> words we never thought we'd hear ever oh, God. Speaking of words we never thought we'd hear ever, Strive has a 3v3 mode coming. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah. I've, uh, w I w I've lost my mind during that announcement because, like, Scion fucking called that uh, Elfelt was coming. But also, it's just, like, the one thing was just, like, I had never expected where we would just get Guilty Gear Fighters. Marvel, like Guilty Gear v. Capcom. It's cute. It's beautiful, and yeah. it actually got me to uh, get to got me to actually buy the game as yeah. y'all uh, saw on stream. Speaking of, have you checked the mod list recently? No, I have not. There not is yet. a full made. I'm genuinely serious. A full made Noel Vermillion model with a portrait oh, no. and voice lines and everything. Well, well, you already know I'm gonna go grab it. Yeah. <laughs> I just uh, I, <laughs> let's see if I can actually get it to work. <laughs> but I, the fact that I managed to get the mods I could to work and that goth punk Elfeld skin, I'm happy. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's like uh, when it comes to like I, I mean Guilty Gear Strive. It's just, it, it, it's just, I've, I don't know, like, this year when I, I, yeah, I bought this year. This year when I bought it, it was just, like, it was a game that just took me by surprise in terms of if I had liked it. Because I usually, I don't know, like, I know about Guilty Gear, but I've never really been into it all too much. But when I was just playing this, it was just, like, this is actually fun. This is actually enjoyable. And also, it actually plays on my Steam Deck. It's... Yes, I am fucking... Looking your way, Bandai Namco, like fucking turn off your anti cheat for Steam Deck. God fucking damn. You know it. you, you know you want to. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I admit, I've, I didn't think I'd have as much fun playing Strive as I th as I did, mm -hmm. and probably still am. But I didn't think I'd have that much fun playing playing Elfeld of all people. Because apparently, yeah. according to uh, according to Ninja, she was a nightmare in earlier games. Oh yeah, so was like characters like Happy Chaos, like. A, but then Happy Chaos came to strive. <laughs> yeah, but no, nah, she just plays like Noel, like Noel Vermillion and uh, Blaze Blue. <laughs> like then, Especially. There's, there's also I believe one of the characters predicted is going to be Dizzy, which. Um, by any chance, are you familiar with her, like, uh, like ultimate KO in one of the older games? Ah, oh, yes, I remember that one. Yeah, the fucking nuke that went off. <laughs> Just the head turn and immediate surrender. Unless you're Slayer, and it's just like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> For context, that man did not give a fuck yep. about anything. Yep. He's like, all right, I'll let you have this one. <laughs> Yeah, and it's it, I don't know. It's gonna be it, I don't know. It's gonna be interesting going forward with Strive, and it's gonna be it, it's certainly going to be interesting when the three v three comes by. I wonder how that's gonna work. I mean, I like because th that's gonna open up possibilities. Like, are we gonna get like six player like uh, co op matches and whatnot? Are we gonna be able to do like raid bosses? I don't know. This, this is going to be the birth of Guilty Gear Lobby shenanigans. I just know. <laughs> <laughs> Light Thero, don't come after us. <laughs> just breaks down your door. I'm in your walls. <laughs> but no, nah, I'm I'm excited for this uh, for this new year at Guilty Gear from Strive. Yeah. I don't know. Let's. I. I'm really see. I, I'm really wondering what the future holds for this and for the time being, though. Speaking of what the future holds, Monster Hunter Wilds. The official Monster Hunter Six. <laughs> well, I can already tell the monster. The uh, hunter. The mon. The for the other hunters out in the uh, other servers are gonna be. 
happy as all heck if they aren't still playing like Sun uh, Rise and Sunbreak. Oh, no, I still. Need, I know I still need to finish Rise. I know I still need to finish Sunbreak. I tried Monster Hunter Rise. Wasn't my thing, really. I tried it. Yeah, I get. It. I get you. I tried it. It's. I don't know. Like. It is what it is. Um, if it's good, cool. If it's not, okay. Um, I guess it sucks. But if it, if it is good, okay, that's fine. I'm yes, I'm not really gonna at least think too much about it. Yeah, at least we'll have. At least y'all will have something fun to play. Yeah. Speaking of fun to play, <laughs> I don't. I got, okay, I don't. I don't. I don't really have anything else. That's, <laughs> that's pretty much just complete list. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, other than that, we do have some stuff uh, to wrap up with and everything. So first up is Christopher Judge and how uh, he was going to pretty much take up the entirety of the event with his uh, monologue. <laughs> and then they and then they hit the music. Yep. Yeah, we have it then. Not, not again. <laughs> <laughs> I just love his line where it's just like my initial speech was longer than the new Call of Duty story. It's just like uh, another company I'll never work for. (laughs) Well played, sir. Well played. (laughs) They also had some other guests like Matthew McConaughey, which I don't know. I mean, y'all got Al Capone. Y'all, I mean. What what next? You gonna raise Martin Scorsese from the dead or something? Kurt Cobain as he as like a fucking virtual idol. <laughs> God, it's Miku all over again. Just a, just hologram Kurt Cobain. Have it be like that South Park fucking episode. <laughs> uh, other than that, we got a. Uh, I'm. Surprised I called this, but Ikumi Nakamura. No, of course. <laughs> yeah, like absolutely being her, just her. That that's you can't really you, you can't really compare her to anything. Just Ikumi is Ikumi. Yeah. What what do you say to that? You can't really. <laughs> There's a picture of her iconic pose at uh one of the game show reveals, and <laughs> she cut it to like. She cut it to her, like, just choking Sasuke. <laughs> <laughs> this woman knows what she is, and she revels in it. Well, that's, that's, it's, glad we, it's glad we got someone like yeah. that. <laughs> Next to that, we uh, we got Matthew Mercer. At the Game Awards. He was uh, playing in, uh, I believe it's like Tales of Asgard or something. It was some uh, uh, Greek mythology type game. Uh, uh, yeah, I believe. So. No, it was uh, yeah, like a Norse mythology type Norse VR mythology. game. Yeah, right, right. Uh, but it's I don't know. It's Matthew Mercer. Yeah. Wait. What? What more can you say? Yeah. I mean, um, and then last but not least, we also got the awards. Like, let's get some of these out of the way. Uh, Alan Wake 2 pretty much swept the fucking competition. And if it wasn't Alan Wake 2, it was Baldur's Gate 3. Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> One thing I am surprised uh, of everything is some people thought Hoffman Rush. No, Forza Motorsport. How the fuck <laughs> did it win? It, it lets you. It plays the game by itself, so of course it's going to be the most accessible. <laughs> But no, I am glad Hi-Fi Rush did win uh, Best Audio Design. Yeah, absolutely. And I just want to say about that racing award, just like, give it next year. I guarantee you Rocket Racing on Fortnite is going to get that. Oh, 100%. Yeah, if it, if, it does, if, it, if it doesn't and it goes to Forza, like, okay, that is fucking rigged. <laughs> Speaking of rigged, <laughs> Iron Mouse won again. Of course she did. <laughs> did you see her reaction to it? Yes, I did. Yeah, it's just uh, like, uh, yeah. Quackity, Iron Mouse. What? <laughs> <laughs> and I also heard that everybody that played her. So, yeah. but yeah, it is it is good that she won again. Yeah. 
<laughs> Even if I say good like because I don't know who any of everyone else in that fucking lineup was. It's like, even if people thought AI won. <laughs> the old shit. AI wins another contest. <laughs> oh, wait. <laughs> yeah. But Hi-Fi Rush winning, uh, winning an award. Yeah, absolutely. It deserves it. I really need to play it. Oh, yeah. Well, hey. Well, I am getting paid this week, and it is a free check, so guess what you're playing? <laughs> well, I was going to ask you, do you want me to play Hi-Fi Rush, or do you want me to play it to Persona 3 Reload? Now, nah, so, nah, guess what you're playing. <laughs> <laughs> Just the fact that the whole game plays to the beat, that's 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 enough for it. That was enough on its own. All right. Yeah, I'll, I'll play it. Like, I'm, I mean... Yeah, I I don't know. I I I was kind of thinking more so when I was looking at it. It was just like Jet Set Radio meets No Straight Roads. Right. But I don't know. It's just like it's I don't know. It's like I I don't have it, but it's just like a game where it's just like if I had the money and I had the time and I like was going to, yeah, I'd absolutely do it. But I mean, if I got oh. paid if I got paid to play, hey, I'll write it off as a business expense on my taxes. <laughs> This is true. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. I'm I'm pretty I'm pretty sure I'm just gonna write off Slay the Princess as a business expense, business expense. Which, by the way, I did not see at the Game Awards at all. Ah, that's this bullshit. Just as much bullshit that Pizza Tower got robbed. Yeah. I don't know. Hopefully, maybe next year we can see Slay the Princess, but I don't know. Maybe I know uh, Steam had its own type of awards. I know, yeah, Slay the Princess did have its own awards, was in its own award, but who knows? Hey, the, honestly, the fact that it was even uh, even on a list is amazing in its own right. Yeah, yeah. There's also, uh, I mean, it's not the only game that didn't win an award, definitely, because Spider-Man <laughs> 2 uh, was robbed! <laughs> Fucking seven robbed. Times. Seven times at that. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's the fact. That Mighty Keith's <laughs> video was just the Mighty Keith video was just like I get nominated. I know times. Uncle Ben ain't after this. <laughs> Cut to Alan Wake. My writing had become reality. <laughs> 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 it's like, I, I know Uncle Ben ain't die for this. There is one thing I am glad that didn't get an award. Was it Genshin? Yeah, it was Genshin. <laughs> <laughs> they got, if I recall, like 800 Primo gems, which isn't even enough for rolling for 10 times on a banner. <laughs> I like how we how we joke. Here's your, here's your one primo jump. Yeah. Do better. Basically, was that. But uh, I have. But yeah, it was obvious that Hawkeye Star Rail was gonna win something. Yeah, and like if if it wasn't be, that, it was definitely gonna be Fortnite. Yeah. Speaking of, I do have Hawkeye Third Rail downloaded now, so I will give it a fair shot and get back to you. Uh, wait, what do you have it downloaded on? Uh, my PS5, so... Oh. I tried getting it for you. I, I, like, I finally... Oh, yeah, that's right. I finally connected my PS4 to the internet. Um, I, I didn't realize until... I didn't realize until very late in the game that, uh... Oh, Hawkeye Star Rail isn't actually on PS4. <laughs> for some reason, but that's not, but Tower of Fantasy is. I don't know. Maybe I'll try that. It's like, what, what, is, what, is, what is your logic, PS4? I don't know. But yeah, I will give it a fair shot and then get back to you on how it is. Yeah. And last but not least, ultimately, the game that took Game of the Year. And the game that, in the light of everything, um, <laughs> rose pretty much an interesting and funny Twitter post from the same kid who stormed the Game Awards last year. Baldur's Gate 3. 
He was there at the Game Awards. He was there at the Game Awards. I thought that that was a joke. Like, they they clipped it from previous years. But no, they actually sent him a trespassing notice. (laughs) So they were looking out for him. (laughs) They did. They didn't notice him until after the show, like a day after. <laughs> that dude's a fucking. That dude's an actual fucking ninja. <laughs> <laughs> That's beautiful, right there. That's what that is. Oh man. <laughs> Baldur's Gate three. Out of everything in the night, I think the most hilarious thing is that the one of the major head devs. Dressed up in armor, literally said, I was not prepared for this. Motherfucker, uh-huh. sure you, were. you were in costume. You showed up. You. you knew exactly that you were prepared for this. You were ready to take game of the year. I I would have been happy. He, he, I, was, he, he, was, I would have been he was reading off the teleprompter. <laughs> I, w- I would have been surprised if it was like Spider-Man 2 took game of the year. And that dude just walked home with sad. Uh, just in that giant suit of armor. He got dressed up for nothing. That would have been funny in and of its own right. <laughs> Thank you, Yuri. <laughs> that would have been funny. Yeah. That would have been hilarious. Would have would have added salt to the wound if uh, Yuri Lowenthal swung on stage. <laughs> I do kind of like, because I had a question ultimately, is that it's just like, what if, what if like these people just didn't show up because they didn't think they would win? It's just like, I think Idris Elba actually didn't show up because he got nominated but didn't win but i'm just thinking it's just like what if he actually won the nomination he was in um, like what would it what would we have done for like, oh, the time being he's like i'm not ball <laughs> oh my god <laughs> oh, this is awkward <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, yeah it's uh um i, I don't know it's, i'm admittedly it's, I'm admittedly surprised that Final Fantasy XIV didn't win Best Ongoing Game for, like, the third... No, like, that was Best Community, my mistake. Hmm. Yeah, I'm surprised it didn't win that for the second year in a row. Yeah. Final Fa- I-, I think Final Fantasy War t- XIV might have won something, but, uh... Other than that, it's just, like... Yeah, I, I don't... I don't really know what else oh. to say about the Game Wars. It's just, like, it was, um... There was not really a whole lot in the grand scheme of things to, like, really get excited for. I mean, there was some stuff, but it was just, like, it. most of it is just kind of the same schlock we've been getting since, like, the days of, like, I don't, I don't know. I want to say, like, Call of Duty Black Ops was big, major big thing, Black Ops 2. Like, we right. kind of get in the same realistic cinematic schlock we've been getting and I, I know I get it. Like a lot of people have worked on it, but at the same time, it's just like, if you want me to get your games and everything, you're gonna have to do more than just do The Last of Us or Mass Effect or Call of Duty. Like you gotta do more than just the atypical realism, post-apocalyptic as Middle East type stuff. Middle East, yes. I'm actually I'm absolutely sticking to that one. <laughs> I'm absolutely sticking to that one. You can't stop me. <laughs> you can't stop me. I'm all cartilage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's I don't know. I don't really know what to expect going forward because it's just like, I mean, it, it, it's it's kind of. It's kind of hard for me to. It's kind of hard for me to be like this because it's just like I mean, last year you compare it to last year. We got Hades two as an announcement. We got fucking like oh my god! It's just like. By, uh, by the way, still nothing on that. But hey, I'm like buying. I, I'm not buying gonna. gonna say I'm, I'm not gonna test uh, Super Giant on that. Hades was a beautiful game, and it took hey. so much fucking time. I'm willing to wait. That's why. That's why I'm gonna shut the hell up about it. Yeah. All I'll say is it should have won most anticipated game. I'm saying that. <laughs> that is still. Is, we all knew Rebirth was coming. You couldn't give this to Hades 2. Come on. 
Look, just give it to Hades 2, leave it out for next year, because guarantee you we're probably most likely not going to get any word on it until, what, 2026? Probably late 2025, early 26. Yeah, something like that. I imagine, like, the Game Awards in 2025 will get a new trailer for Hades 2 or something like that. And it'll probably say, like, coming, like, late 2027 or something. It, it's it's most likely going to be the end tale of the decade that we get Hades, if it's being worked on as much as it is. Right. Uh, yeah. Pretty much. And, uh, and like, Steam users get early access. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we might get, like, early access. I mean, in terms of early access, we might get, like, I don't know, maybe 2025? Yeah. Something like that. Because the Oh, yeah, I wasn't... I wasn't there for Hades when it was in early access, but okay, I wasn't there there playing it, but I did see people playing in early access, and yeah, we're very good hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's all I'll say. Yeah, yeah, but um, ultimately, I think that might do it. Honestly, I don't really know if you want to say anything else about the game awards, but well, honestly, I'm excited for that. Uh... Warframe update that drops today. It gives me a reason to get back in again. Mm -hmm. So, right. also the fact that I saw it, saw them fighting with the book, I I was tempted to say to just go read, 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 read. <laughs> so, but yeah, other than that, other than that, that's all I gotta say. Huh. Yeah, all right uh yeah that's gonna do it ultimately um i don't know you want plug anything uh no not really i've got nothing to plug all right uh as for me i mean you're watching this on youtube you already know uh i got twitch i got uh portfolio from my art station i got instagram and if you want to support me personally, donate to me at ko-fi.com slash the earth And hey, if you want to see me play any of the games we talked about here tonight, I mean, I got a membership where you could do that. So feel free to take a look at it. But yeah, that's going to do it for uh, right now. Um, I guess just tune in the next time when uh, we got the podcast running up again. So thank you all so much and uh, take care. And y'all have a good one. And excuse us while we try to crash into each other. Speaking of trying to crash into each other... <laughs>